Welcome, it's a great time to be a miner. As more and more users are coming into the mining crypto sphere, I'm getting lots of questions about power supplies and setup and how do we get started. I consistently urge users that are building a new mining rig of at least four GPUs to go at least with a dual PSU setup, specifically to augment the power of your ATX standard power supply with a server power supply. This video is just gonna be a quick demonstration on how to set that up, how this should be done, and why it is a great idea to run a dual setup with a server power supply. So without further ado, let's spin that intro. All right, let's talk server power supplies. There's a lot of new miners in the space right now and many of them are just intimidated when you bring up the term server power supply. It's something new, it's foreign, they don't know how to hook it up. We're gonna do just a quick setup uh, and talk about how to get this up and running. This is the most efficient and most budget oriented way to power your mining rig. Let's go ahead and list some of the pros and some of the cons, and then we'll jump back into the setup of this. Pros and cons of using a server power supply as your secondary power supply on a mining rig. Pros, it is the ease of setup. It really is a simple setup. You can have cleaner wiring. It's a lot easier to run your specific six pin wires and split them off than running your multi-connection wires off of your ATX power supply. Uh, the efficiency and price, they go hand in hand. You cannot find cheaper power supplies that have the efficiency and the durability that a server power supply does. Now, here's the big drawback, the cons. These things are loud, they're noisy. A server power supply has one single small, high-powered, high-pitched fan. They do put up a lot more heat off of the power supply and they require a bit more planning on where you're running what and how you're setting them up, especially with what adapters you will use. All right, real quickly, we have a standard ATX power supply. This is a 550 bronze power supply, nothing special, just a Roswell cheapo bronze PSU. Then we have a 1200 watt HP server power supply with breakout board. We have an HP 750 watt power supply. Now we have to use a breakout board in order to power these because these are made to plug and play into a server chassis in a server room. These aren't made to hook into a normal computer. So to convert the power, we get ourselves a nice handy dandy breakout board. So the breakout board has 12 PCIe power pins. Those will run to our GPUs and risers depending on your configuration. Then we have a mini four pin adapter that we will run from our main ATX power supply to signal power into this to turn them on simultaneously. So let's just quickly go over the setup easy peasy and get you up and mining. First thing you do, you take your standard ATX power supply. You hook up your 24 pin to your motherboard. You hook up your CPU power to your motherboard. Next, you have to signal power to your server power supply. And you're gonna do this with the mini four pin. It's generally on a Molex cable that comes with your power supply. If your power supply doesn't have one of these, I know EVGA, some of them will come with a little mini four pin adapter from Molex to mini four pin, or you can buy this adapter for like two bucks off eBay. So you would just hook up our peripheral power into our power supply. We're gonna run over the mini four pin, plug it into our server power supply right here. So now when we turn on this power supply, this one gets power, this one turns on. Next, we are going to run our PCIe power cable from our breakout board up to either our risers or to our GPU or to both. I personally have always ran all of my GPUs 
solely off the server supply, and then I'm running the risers off the ATX. Many people, most people, probably run both the riser and the GPU off the server power supply, and then everything else in the system runs off your standard ATX. So how they do this, this is a six pin, it runs up, this one is running into an eight. From this eight, this carries quite a bit of uh, wattage, so you could actually split this into a dual eight pin or a dual six pin. And then you could run a single GPU that has two of the six pin or eight pins, or you could run a single eight pin to the GPU and run the other eight pin down to the riser so that you're powering both off of one cable. So what you do is you would run one of these split into two into your graphics card, run another cable, run it up and plug it into the riser. You could split the other cable and run it to two risers. So you could take a single six pin. This is just a, this is just a six to six. You could run this six pin from your breakout board. So you would run this six pin up to here. You could split it to dual six pin. You could plug it into two risers. So you could run this up to your risers. You could split this into two risers. You could split this into a dual eight pin for a single GPU. So now we have two cables running to power one riser and one GPU. Again, if your GPU only takes a single uh, eight pin or a single six pin, you could split a single one of these that are either a six pin in or an eight pin, and you could split it to the GPU and to the riser at easy peasy, that one's gone. Okay, so now what you wanna do, your key, you wanna make sure to build evenly. If you're running one off of here, you wanna run one off this side. You run one here, you wanna run one off the other side. Keep your build nice and even, that way the power distribution's going off different rails and you're getting a nice solid overall performance all the time. You're gonna repeat this for every GPU and every riser. That is all there is to this. Real quick, if you're new to this, make sure that you're getting the right breakout board to go with your type of server power supply. I would not mess with any of those random power supplies, server power supplies that are out there on eBay. Stick to the HP, um 750 or 1200 watt power supplies because you know what you're going to get you know the boards that come with them they're trusted they're tried and true they make all kinds of different server power supplies made for different server chassis but you might not get the specific breakout board you might not have the proper power and this is where a lot of the intimidation comes from for new users these are really easy to pick up and buy as a set if you go to parallel miner you can actually buy yourself either of these power supplies with the included cable sets and the breakout board all in one package for about half of the price that you would pay for comparable wattage on a standard ATX power supply. Tips and tricks, let's plan out our build and calculate your power needs ahead of time. More is better than having less and then having to rebuild and go a different route. You utilize the 80% power rule on power supplies. Make sure that you're not within 20% of your max power or you may want to think about increasing your power supply. Um, always stay bronze or better. Do not overload your connectors. You can melt them, especially if you're using SATA. Please don't use SATA unless you have to use SATA on specifically the risers. Um, make sure to set your BIOS to boot on power. You can also set your overclocks and set your miner to begin so that if you reboot the system or if the power flashes or if you use a Wi-Fi outlet to reboot the power, it will start right back in and start mining. No downtime, no losses all profit keep on mining one other thing i wanted to touch on real quick this has been a huge topic of conversation across all of mining especially new miners this is bad do not use this i can personally attest that using this setup will eventually cause failure somewhere you're going to melt a wire a sata connection is only made to handle 54 watts a six pin power can pull a lot more watts than that. However, if you're using it into a riser, a riser could use anywhere clear up to 75 watts because that is what the standard X16 slot, PCIe slot, 
can draw. That's what your motherboard provides is up to 75 watts. This will melt, this will fail eventually if you're putting that much wattage through it. I know from personal experiences, these will melt. Ideally, you want all six pins hooked to your risers. If you can't do that, this will function properly and will not cause a fire hazard. So Molex to six pin, okay. Six pin, ideal. SATA, stay away from SATA. Real quickly, this is the HP 750. If you look closely, you can see the input is between 100 volts and 240 volts. The output on this is always 750. Now, whereas the 1300 watt is quite different, you can go from 100 volts up to 240 volts, but your output will vary based on your volt input. So if you have 110, you're only gonna get 900 watt output. Whereas if you're running on 220, you'll get 1200 watts on these. So that's a little bit different. You're actually getting 900 watts for standard normal power on these. And there's our breakout board up close, our four pin, 12 six pin PCIe's and our power switch. One other topic I discussed briefly in one of the other videos in my noobs guide is power switches. Do not use the jumper method where you jumper two pins on your motherboard with a screwdriver or knife. It eventually is not good for the, the motherboard and could damage your components. These are the cheapo power switch buttons I was talking about. You can get a two pack, maybe not the Roswell brand, but a two pack of cheap power buttons like this on eBay currently for 450 for two. So you're talking 225 per button, ship the house. That's the way to go. Here's what it looks like. Just a simple push button switch with a two prong for your power. Your motherboard manual will show you exactly where to plug this in at. If you don't have a manual, Google it. It'll tell you your specific model mother motherboard and where the power switch is plugged in. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. If you need more detailed instructions about server power supplies, make sure to check out Mining Chambers video above. He goes into great detail on all the ins and outs and different setups, adapters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, if you need further guidance or assistance, make sure to join the Hash Raptor Discord or the Misfit Mining Discord. There's lots of seasoned veterans in there and they're always willing to help new people, help answer your questions, help you troubleshoot along the way. That's the best part about being a miner is the mining community. If you're trying to set up a new mining rig build and you've never done one, check out my noobs guide above. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and subscribe and follow us for future content. Thanks for coming along and enjoy the ride. Pew.